All right, welcome back. Now, at least 12 million people have been conceived through some form of assisted reproductive technology. This is now globally. In the last 45 years, in vitro fertilization has become the main treatment for infertility around the world. Well, this is because one person in six suffers from infertility. Closer home in Kenya, infertility is on the rise. And according to data from the Kenya Fertility Society, at least one in every five couples suffers from infertility. Now, the data also estimates that at least 4.2 million Kenyans require medical assistance to conceive. The most common reproductive problems are low sperm count, zero sperm count, and blocked tubes. Now, the Kenya Fertility Society attributes up to 30% of infertility cases to men, 30% to women, and 40% to unknown factors. Now, with World IVF Day around the corner tonight, uh, rather around the corner, tonight we will unpack in vitro fertilization or IVF, the pain, the cost, and of course, the joys and pains that come with it. Joining me in studio is Dr. Rajesh Chondri, who is an IVF specialist, and Julia Vitai, who is the Assistant Vice President and Business United Head from Fertility Point. Thank you both for joining me. Let's begin first with demystifying what infertility is before we get into the solution. So let me start with you, Doctor. Uh, thanks, Julia, for having me here. Yeah. Uh, a day ahead of uh, old IVF day. So infertility, we say when uh, a couple is trying for pregnancy with regular intercourse without the use of any contraception mm -hmm. uh, for a period of one year at least, uh, and then they are not getting pregnant. So ideally, 80% uh, of the couple should get pregnant with such try. Uh, and they, they, they will be labeled as infertile if they uh, try for one year and then they are not getting pregnant mm -hmm. if they are below 35 years. Now if they are between 35 to 40 years and if they are not getting uh, pregnant uh, within uh, a six month of period then they should be labeled as infertile after six month. Now if they are if the woman age is 40 year and above mm -hmm. then the time given is just three month. Okay. But uh, having said that if they have already a, a problem before. Yeah. Uh, like underlying condition, like any medical condition or surgical condition that can lead to infertility, or say the menstrual period is already irregular or condition like endometriosis, then even that one year period should not be waited for. So what are some of the assisted fertility options that exist, Julia? Uh, we have very many options. So first of all, uh, Fertility Point has been established from 2018 and we offer a, a wide range of fertility options. The biggest one being in vitro fertilization, okay. IVF, which is commonly uh, treated across, uh, across the world. Mm. Uh, we also have other options such as IUI and also other treatment options such as sperm aspir aspiration. We also do freezing of eggs because we'll have patients who are not able to conceive at a specific time, right. patients who go through cancer. Those are some of the treatment options that we give them across fertility point. So the biggest question is how much is it, <laughs> especially for IVF? Yes. Um, so IVF um, is currently offered at a, at a wide range, but currently at fertility point, we have um, a market rate of 450,000, but we have partnered with various um, Op, uh, con we have, we've partnered with various um, companies yeah. that offer health financing. Okay. So if you come to us and you're not able to pay at that time, then they can be able to give you different options. And uh, recently there was the Assisted Reproductive Technology Bill, right. which was tabled in Parliament, and that will actually help more Kenyans access universal health care because insurances will also be able to cover infertility mm -hmm. for, for patients across Kenya. You know, Dr. Rajesh, and, and as much as I'm hearing the cost, a lot of people are thinking, I, do I even have that money? Because that's per cycle, correct? Yes. So I read a very interesting statistic, this of course being the U.S. because they're able to monitor. Um, but they said 770,000 IVF babies were born in 2018, but this required 3 million cycles, right? So Dr. Rajesh, not every cycle is going to work. So you can think for every couple who spent, what, that 450,000, it doesn't work, you go back in, you're spending another 450,000. By the time they get the baby, how many cycles you know, do couples have to go through or an individual? 
So the success will depend on the age of the uh, age of the patient. Okay. And there are other factors as well. So younger the age, the lesser number of cycles is required. So on an average, it will require two to three cycles to get pregnant on mm -hmm. an average. Okay. So 50 percent of the couple they get pregnant in the first uh, cycle of treatment. Mm -hmm. The remaining will uh, get pregnant in second or third. Uh, cycle of uh, uh, IVF treatment. Uh, the success also depends on what direction of the treatment is. Now, if someone uh, requires surrogacy or mm -hmm. say donor egg or donor sperm and they are still stick with their own uterus or say their own egg, yeah. then the success is, is still far away. So, uh, uh, the age of the couple at which they start the treatment yeah. and the direction of the treatment, mm -hmm. that matters. So if you want to reduce the number of cycles and the cost of the treatment, the right direction of the treatment is important. So if you're talking about someone older, I mean, that's something you can't reverse. So a woman coming, what, 42, yeah. right? And she says, I want to have a child. What are the, what's the likelihood of like, the cycle she has me, to go put through? put some uh, data. Yeah. Like if, uh, if someone is trying at the age of 30, the chances of having a live birth mm -hmm. is almost uh, 40 to 50 percent. Okay. Right? And if someone is trying after 40 years, when the egg is already exhausted in yeah. the ovary, the number of eggs that we get after uh, ovarian stimulation during IVF is already low and the quality is also co compromised. The live birth is less than 5%. Mm -hmm. So if, even if they try for 10 cycles, the uh, success is still far. So that's why I said the mm -hmm. direction of the treatment is important. Okay, let's talk about egg freezing because that's another thing you're finding. Well, I guess you can say a lot of career women are considering because uh, the rat race to chase the bag, to kind of excel and progress in your career is tempting to many and they're putting off childbearing until later years. So, you know, what does that option look like for someone who's considering it? I'll start with you, Julia. Um, it's, first of all, it's something that is doable okay. for any woman who's above the age of 20, 20 years old. So because, as you've mentioned, many women, and not just women, by the way, even men also mm. do freezing of uh, spams because many people have, it can either be either medical condition. So when someone is going through cancer, for example, yeah. um, they cannot be able to have the treatment after the cancer treatment. So they opt to start with freezing the egg, then they can be able to um, conceive after they've done this treatment. So what we do is we take the egg and the sperm during this period, yeah. and then we create the embryo. Once the embryo is, is created and it's stored in our labs, because we have world-class lab uh, facility, then they can be able to now uh, either use a surrogate to help them with this treatment or to help them with now the pregnancy, yeah. or in the event that they are still okay, then they can be able to carry on and bear their children to term. So what is that process? How much does it cost from retrieving the eggs, freezing? What's that cost? Yes. So on average, it costs between 70,000 shillings to 100,000 shillings okay. for both the sperm and also for the egg. And do you have to pay an annual fee to kind of keep the storage going? Yes, at Fertility Point, we have various options because there are patients who would prefer to store their eggs at a certain time, mm -hmm. such as maybe three months. We give them that at, at a fee of, um, which is covered within the treatment option of IVF. And if it is done after three months, then they are able to now pay the annual fee. Which is? Which is now 100,000 for eggs and 70,000 for sperm. Okay. Yes. So the ideal age is 20s. And I'm just thinking someone who's in their 20s is just starting their career. Yeah. They can't afford 100,000 to store their eggs. And even as the older a woman gets, the quality of her eggs also is impacted. You know, Dr. Rajesh, speak to that a bit because by the time a woman is thinking, yeah, I have enough money to put, they're in their 30s, yeah. right? They're, they don't have the quality of a 20 year old anymore. The best time to freeze egg is uh, before 35 years. Okay. So uh, in 20s uh, is a period when women and the girls, they are still girls and then they are uh, pursuing their uh, education. Career is a started after education, which is late in the 20s. Yeah. And uh, if if they are not planning for pregnancy for whatever reason, maybe a social reason or uh, a personal uh, desire to not have family at that point of time, uh, then they can opt for the freezing uh, her egg. 
Now, uh, maybe uh, there may be another uh, reason for not having pregnancy at that time. Maybe uh, they have, uh, she have not find a right partner. So, and another reason for f uh, freezing egg is medical condition. Mm -hmm. Like if someone is having a cancer or uh, going to, uh, for the radiotherapy, then that's another reason for uh, the egg freezing. But nowadays, the social egg freezing is more on the trend. A social reason means that uh, not getting a partner at the right time, at that point of time, or right. for career uh, reason. So I think uh, it's uh, 32, if not 35. Uh, at least 35 should be considered as a cut-off point. Mm -hmm. Even they can consider freezing an egg at the age of 40, but the best is the uh, before 35 year. Mm -hmm. Now, what should be considered uh, during freezing egg is like how many eggs should be frozen, right? And uh, whether that will guarantee you the mm -hmm. uh, pregnancy later in the date or not. Because when you will uh, consider getting pregnant at the age of 45, yeah. then by that time your uterus may be affected with other conditions like adenomyosis or uh, fibroids. Mm -hmm. Then even if you get a good uh, embryo, and then that uh, the uh, uterus may not be good enough to hold the pregnancy. So all these factors should be considered while uh, delaying while you think that you, you should de delay your pregnancy. And is there anything that someone can do beyond, of course, the help that you can get from IVF and other assisted fertility options? Um, for instance, nutrition or just kind of keeping healthy and active. What are some things that someone can do before you go the IVF way? Just to optimize the body condition, mm. like for pregnancy, like uh, the hormonal condition should be checked in, like the um, thyroid condition or any other condition like diabetes or hypertension. Now, these this, uh, problems are something that is related to age. Yeah. Now, if you are 30, the diabetes may not be there. But if you are like 40 or 45, then diabetes may be inevitable or on the progress. Or thyroid may be on the progress. So uh, these things should be screened off and then the, you should maintain the body weight. Like body weight is, uh, if you are very obese, then that may be, the IVF process itself is very difficult. And then uh, the pregnancy also becomes a bit difficult because obesity will invite some other medical condition as well, like hypertension or diabetes, apart from that. So the body weight and the, this other medical condition should be uh, checked regularly. Uh, finally, as we are running out of time, let me come to you, Julia, because there's also the stigma attached to people who go through IVF. Mm. And there's this very, well, it's an unfortunate term when they talk about test tube babies and, oh, did you go through that process? And yet, you know, that's something that couples have desired for. That is their path. But how do you demystify and deal with the stigma that's attached to IVF? Okay. First of all, we have to understand that by the time a couple is considering IVF, they are going through a lot of emotional distress. Remember, it causes a lot of psychological distress, not just from the family, from the community, from the people around them. People have been married for five years, 10 years, they still don't have children. There's a high expectation and a high burden for them to have a child, maybe for certain reasons, such as family legacy, to continue even with that, that heritage of having a child in that home. So the stigma um, is something that we have to also understand because it is a process that is done outside of the human body. But when the embryos and when the child is coming to term, they're normal. We have very many success stories. Um, at Fertility Point, we have more than 3,000 successful pregnancies, which we've had since our conception. And we, we like to continue with that trend because remember, these children are growing in the society just as any other child. So that stigma is something that we have to constantly have a conversation because this is one of the starting points, right? It is a taboo to discuss infertility, even within the homestead, even within churches, even within within the community as, as a large, but we need, uh, even as a whole, and even as government, and even through other community agents, we need to start demystifying that this is just a treatment option. Mm -hmm. Just as we treat any other disease or any other, um, anything that can be affecting the body. So when children are, are, give, are, are born through IVF, they come out normally. And that's the hope that we'd like to, to give them. 
Yeah. Okay. Let me, let me add yeah, on sure. this. Mm. Uh, from where this stigma uh, around the IVF and surrogacy has come mm. through the our uh, the culture, our society thinking that uh, uh, sex is required for the uh, pregnancy. Now IVF is something that uh, you can get pregnant without sex. Mm -hmm. So that belief has been tormented, and. Uh, uh, now, gestation is gestation is one thing. I mean, getting pregnant is one thing, and mother is another thing. Right. Like with the help of IVF, you can get the motherhood without getting pregnant. And now that has challenged the traditional belief, and that that's why there is a uh, uh, this stigma against the IVF and uh, surrogacy. But I believe now the uh, society is moving a bit fast this generation, and then the, all this stigma will be slowly uh, will be webbed off. And hopefully this kind of conversation starts to do that. Thank yeah. you so much, Dr. Rajesh and Julia, for your time. Of course, World IVF Day uh, is coming up this week, so take some time to learn more. What's happening at Fertility Point? Can people get more information? Yes, uh, you can visit our website at www.fertilitypoint.co.ke or call us on our number at 0792-111-222. We have discounts that we've offered through, during this month. So please visit us and call us if you need our treatment options, and we can give you more information about these uh, services. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. Let's take another short break here on Citizen Weekend. Sports News up next.